Hey, hey, it's your Wisconsin Wine Guy back again with another wine review. Yes, this is my usual background, but your Wisconsin Wine Guy is on the road having fun, sharing wines with people, educating people about wine, about their palate. Always enjoy doing that. So, we are back to show you another wine that you can find. These are everyday wines. These are wines you can find in your stores where you shop for wine. Wherever you shop for wine, you can possibly find these wines. Let's just say some wine shops. Not all wine shops, some wine shops. When I had a wine shop, I wanted wines that you couldn't find any place else. So some wine shops, but definitely your liquor stores or grocery stores, you can find a lot of these wines. Uh, I give them a taste. Let you know what I think about these wines. Utilize the infamous thumb rating system. Thumbs up says, hey, you know it's a solid wine. I recommend it. Give it a try. Let me know what you think. Three quarters says, you know what? I would share this wine with my friends. Halfway, ooh, something about that wine was off. And I'm going to tell you why it was off for me. Doesn't make it a bad wine. You give it a try. Let myself and the rest of us know down in the comments what you thought about the wine. Thumbs down. Easy one. So let's get to it. Now, 1924. Many of us have seen this on the shelves in our stores. Just simply 1924. I mean, it's... Bla uh, labeled differently 1924 big, 1924 small, but this is the 1924 limit. Well, first, let's say this 1924 wines is part of Gnarly Head. You know, Gnarly Head wines. I don't think I did a review of Gnarly Head wines, I gotta look into that. But 1924 wines is part of the Gnarly Head line of wines. Again, here's the thing about wines you have these wineries that make these wines that make the same labeled wines in different tiers that make wines under different labels. Right? <laughs> exactly. You know, so you should do some research on some of your wines and find out some of your favorite wines are made by the same winery of another wine. There's your tip. So this is by Gnarly Head, uh, 1924. And this has a lot to do with prohibition. I believe it was. Prohibition has a lot to do with, you know, 1924, you know, wines, but this is going to be the 1924 limited edition bourbon barrel age. They call it double black. All right. This is 2021 coming out of low dye. Now, how many of my wine drinkers out there were or still are low dye fans? I'm waiting, because those who, are, excuse me, those who are Lodi fans know that the 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 fruit or the wines coming out of Lodi was just intense. You know, if it, it could be a Cabernet, a Zinfandel was probably the most known, but it could be a Cabernet, a Zinfandel, a Syrah, a Merlot, any of the red wines. When those wines and the fruit come out of Lodi, we're talking about deep. Fruits, some of them like jammy, like 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 intense, okay. But it was good, and if it was a very well made or crafted wine or balanced wine, it was even better. But we're talking about you know intense fruit and oftentimes high alcohol in some of those wines, without being aged in a bourbon barrel. So here we are, double black, aged 2021 from Lodi, California, Cabernet Sauvignon, and we're looking at where's the alcohol. You know, I wish they put the alcohol in the same spot on every wine. You know, so I would have to search for where the alcohol is. Uh, let me see here. Alcohol, alcohol, alcohol. Well, I'm going to find... Oh, there it is. 15%. Now, funny, because a lot of the wines coming out of Lodi, when I was drinking a lot of Lodi wines, were like 15% anyway. <laughs> you know what I mean? They were like 14 Fourteen and a half, fifteen percent, fifteen and a half percent, sometimes sixteen, sixteen percent Zinfandel. They were coming out there, out there anyway, right? So here we go. Here we're going to taste this. Haley Corker, keeping the wine fresh for me. Now, there's a lot of barrel aged wines on the market, quite a bit. Some are good, some are bad. I reviewed some here. Uh, oh, Wisconsin wine guys, wine reviews, you know, so we're going to find out what this is like. Beautiful color. Beautiful color. I, I wish to see if that's the same. Can you see that? That's a beautiful color. 
in here. So I, I can't take anything away from that color. That color is is wonderful. You know, it's low life fruit. It's it's gonna have density to it. I mean, you can't even see through it. That's low dye fruit. And those who are old school low dye drinkers, you know what I'm talking about, right? On the nose. Bursting with fruit, and again for the low dye, you had you had a combination of ripe fruit character and cooked fruit character because it was it was so ripe, it was so dense, right? Mmm. And now here you add in you add in that bourbon barrel, you know, uh, influence, and you pick up on some of that. You pick up on a little bit subtly of that of that bourbon spice that comes here. A subtle bourbon caramelization you pick up on that but it doesn't override or overpower the fruit on the nose and that's pretty nice mm. but now you know how I said that the proof is always in the bottle pun intended proof in the bottle <laughs> all right there we go nose is nice two step first step rinse then again limited edition now there's another 1924 that that this is uh, a regular Cabernet. This is different, okay? Look for that one. Wow. See, it is nice, but that's not why I'm chewing. I'm chewing because of the tannins. But it's not long. It's there initially. If you do a rinse like I do, it's there initially. Then it's like fades away. That finish is plum. First of all, that initial hit. Oh, let's just do it on the next taste. We were we were testing for acidity and tannins, right? Let's do it on the next taste. Mm. Okay. Definitely takes me back to that time with that low ripe fruit. Almost like so ripe, almost like sweet fruit. But it's not sweet. But it has that, that fruity this fruity fruity quality to it. So again. So the finish for me on this one, plummy finish. It goes in, intensity of fruit. Mid palate, the way it spreads. Is that bourbon influence? But overall, not too bad. The bourbon for me, for me, doesn't take over, which is which is good. This is important. You know, be true to what you are. It's a wine, and it was aged in bourbon barrels. So they did a good job with that part. You know, don't take away from that unless it was your intent for it to taste like bourbon. So that part is good. You put a little bit more in here. And then let's give you the opinion. Let's let's rate this wine. All right. Let you know what I think of it. The 2021 20, low die. I like to say that low die. Cabernet Sauvignon Bourbon Barrel Age 1924 by Gnarly Head. I'm going to give this a thumbs up. I'll tell you why. I give it a thumbs up because, again, as I said, it doesn't take away from the fruit, from the Cabernet, from the Cabernet qualities. The bourbon-esque characteristics, for me, it plays. It goes bourbon, Cabernet, low dye fruit, bourbon, Cabernet, low dye fruit. You know, it plays. The finish, the finish for me isn't bourbon. The finish for me is plum. I thought nice acidity, nice tannins, good structure. Probably different foods that bring out more of the bourbon flavors too, but I think for me right now, it's pretty solid. Thumbs up. Give it a try. Let me know what you think down in the comments. 
All right. There you have it. Thumbs up for the 1924 2021 Lodi. Cabernet something on the barrel age, limited edition, double black. It's your Wisconsin wine guy saying to you as always, let your palate be the guy in selecting your wine. And you know what? I need to grab one of those old school Lodi wines and do a review. I'll see you next time. Ciao!